Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really inexpensive quad-core single board computer that I recently picked up on Amazon. In the past few weeks, this little kit and board have popped up in my news feed stating that it's a super cheap single board computer. Some people were able to get just the board for $8 on Amazon, but unfortunately that was sold out by the time I got to it, so I actually had to pick up the kit. And it actually comes with the board, an 8GB micro SD card, power supply, case, and the little LCD display module. So in this video, I really wanted to get down to the bottom of this thing and see if it's really worth picking this up for $16. Now we only have one gig of RAM here, but we do have a quad core 1.5 gigahertz A53 ARM CPU. So here's the deal. This kit is actually known as the Recon Sentinel. They have a full website. And basically what this is, is internet security for your network. It takes network inventory, devices and services, network scanning and detection, cyber decryption, and device blocking. And basically, this is ready to go out of the box. All you'll need to do is plug it into your router, and then plug power into the kit itself, download their app, and you can get up and running with it. And this whole setup is actually built around a single board computer from Pine64 known as the Rock 64 This is the one gigabyte model that comes pre-installed in here. On this case itself, there's no HDMI out, but we're gonna be pulling the single board computer out of this case and make it work like any other single board computer does. I kinda wish they would have left the HDMI accessible from within the case, but unfortunately we will have to take this apart. It's not a big deal, there's four screws on the bottom, and as you can see, this does come with the correct power supply for this single board computer. So in order to get to the main bread and butter of this kit, we just have to pull these four screws out of the bottom, pull the bottom plate off, and there we have it. We now have access to the Rock 64 SBC. So it has the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi 3. You could reuse this in a project if you'd like to, but this is the main brains. This is what we're gonna be working with in this video. It's a one gigabyte model, and it does come with an eight gigabyte micro SD card. So there's a lot that can be done with this board as long as we can find an operating system for it. And lucky for us, Pine64 actually has a ton for this little board here. And this is powered by a quad-core rock chip 3328 at 1.5 gigahertz. The GPU is the Mali 450 MP2, and we have one gig of DDR3 RAM. It's got power in, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full-size HDMI. We also have a spot for an eMMC module to speed up loading times. One USB 3.0 port, two USB 2.0 ports, and Ethernet. So it's definitely not top of the line specs, but at 16 bucks, this is actually looking like it might be worth it, but we still need to get into some testing. This does come with that eight gigabyte micro SD card, so you can install a different operating system. And all of them can be found on the Rock64 wiki page. I will leave a link in the description. If we scroll down here, we have Armbian, Bionic Desktop, Libra Elect, Debian, Nextcloud, Slackware, Recallbox, NetBSD, Android 9, Android 8, Android 8 TV, Android 7. There's some builds of Manjaro, CentOS, DiapPi, Laka, and there's a few more here that you can choose from. So yeah, there is a lot of support here for the Rock 64. And in this video, I'm going to be testing out an Android build, and if everything goes well with that, I'll move over to some other operating systems. And to give this little board a fighting chance, I'm actually going to be running my operating system from an eMMC module instead of a micro SD card. These modules are much faster than an SD card, and they're definitely recommended for a board like this. And I'm also going to be adding a small active heatsink to the CPU. I really want to give this board the best chance it has, and I think with an eMMC module and some CPU cooling, we can get the best performance that this little board can offer. Okay, so like we just saw, there's a ton of different operating systems available, but I actually went ahead and installed Android 7.1, and the big reason is we have Google Play, so I can install some apps so we can test out how this thing performs. I also tried the Android 9 version, but unfortunately, I just couldn't get Google Play to install. I tried everything, and I wanted to get easy access to apps, so with this one here, at least we have access to Google Play. And as you can see, I have downloaded some different applications to test out. So first things first, Let's try some media consumption. We're gonna head over to YouTube. And from here, we're actually gonna go check out Big Buck Bunny. So we're at 4K. Don't think it's gonna do well at 4K, but we'll try it out anyway. Give it some time to buffer up. As you can see, we're still swirling here. 
And to tell you the truth, I'm not sure if it's even going to start the 4K version here. Our viewpoint is at 720p because this is outputting 720p video, but the video is being played at 4K through YouTube, 4K 60. Let's take it down a little bit because 4K is not looking great here. So I finally got it going at 1080p. I'm connected over Ethernet, but it took forever to buffer. But overall, I gotta say 1080p playback is pretty good. I waited for 4K, it just wouldn't buffer for some reason. I tried Wi-Fi using a dongle I have and the Ethernet. But once you can get it up and loaded, 1080p playback isn't bad at all from YouTube. Next up, I've moved over to Plex, and we're going to try a 4K again, but this is 4K 38 megabits per second. It's that same video. We're going to play from beginning. And I'm sure it's going to come across like this on video, so you can see it's pretty laggy here. 4K, 30 FPS, 8 megabits per second, H.264 through Plex. Not doing a great job. But while we're here, let's just see if we can do something that's standard definition. And the buffer time on everything that I've been doing so far is outrageous. It's been taking forever to get up and loaded. They rose from nothing. But once the standard definition up to 1080p is loaded up, it does play it quite well. So now that we have video playback out of the way, it's time to move over to some native Android gaming. I chose Minecraft Pocket Edition for the first game here. And to tell you the truth, I thought it was going to perform much worse than this. Now, performance isn't great. We're at 30 FPS. I have seen it drop down. But for a really inexpensive board, this is actually running Minecraft way better than I thought it would. I did turn off fancy graphics, and we're at six chunks. And as you can see here, it's keeping steady around 30. And finally, I wanted to test a more 3D intensive game. So here we have Real Racing 3, and it's completely unplayable here. Even the Raspberry Pi 4 running Android runs this game better. So I really did want to go through and test some more stuff on this, but the lag was real with this one. And that's the big reason that the one gigabyte model is being sold for $16 with a kit like this. It's definitely not great for media consumption or gaming, but for little projects like the Recon Sentinel, music playback, and things like that, this little board could definitely work. And I still think it's worth $16 if you want to add this to a little project you have going on. But you don't buy something like this for media consumption or gaming. I'm going to have to figure out what I really want to do with this little board. And if you have any suggestions or you want to see anything else running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's pretty much it for this video. Was hoping for a little better performance, but that's what you get with a super cheap single board computer. If you're still interested in picking one of these up for a little project or to use it as a recon sentinel, I will leave links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.